Hi, Paul Beckwith, and I'm talking about the uh, collapse of ecosystems on our planet, specifically 76% loss of flying insect biomass in the space of 27 years. Um, so we're talking about soils here, okay, and uh, the, uh, the UN FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization says the world has just 60 more years of growing crops and then we can't grow any more crops. And this is based on soil destruction. Okay, the present farming techniques are destroying the soils. This is totally unnecessary. <coughs> this comes about because of monocultures of crops, because of all the pesticides and herbicides and materials that we put into the, into the soils, because of climate change that will that um, sucks the moisture out of soils if in, in the case of droughts or or uh, just saturates the entire uh, column and causes erosions in the case of extreme weather event you know extreme uh, torrential rain events uh, causing flooding um, even in Britain farmers weekly says we have only a hundred harvests left hundred harvests left that's it then where, what are we going to do? Eat each other? Okay, the UN estimates six, 6 million hectares of new farmland will be needed each year to keep up with global food demand from global, the global population projection. Instead, we're losing 12 hec million hectares a year from soil degradation. We wreck it, then move on, trashing rainforests and other precious habitats as we go. Okay, it talks about soil being magical. There's more microorganisms in soil than all the people who have ever lived on earth and we treat it like dirt. Right, so the techniques that were supposed to feed the world threaten us with starvation. Um, here's a paper from a journal Anthropocene looked at undisturbed sediments in a French lake and basically the intensification of farming over the past century has increased the rate of soil erosion by a factor of 60 times. So six soil is eroding 60 times faster now than it was in the 11th century, according to this study. Um, and, uh, you know, it goes on and on about soil. Um, it's the International Year of Soils, but you wouldn't know it. Okay. Um, you know, we know the most the, the the situation that comes to mind is the Dust Bowl in the U.S. in the '30s. Okay, this the farming practices were mismanaged. All of the nutrients, all the water was taken out of the soil. There was no cohesion. So big when there were large uh, wind storms that just picked up all the topsoil and carried it and just spread it elsewhere. You know, completely eroded down the soil, and farming practices had to change as a result of that. Okay, uh, so here we go. The British government spends 450 million pound each year on agricultural research and development, but they look at techniques to, that wreck the soils. There's no mention of permaculture on the websites of the two main funding bodies of the British government. You know, this is, this is we're, we're, we're so fucked up, basically. Sorry, excuse me if kids are watching. Okay, third of the earth's soil is acutely degraded due to agriculture. Okay, we're losing 24 billion tons a year, according to a UN study. So as food demand goes up, de there's demand for productive land increase. And, um, you know, there, there's the global land outlook by the UN to combat desertification. There's a whole section in the global land outlook. And I'll talk about that. It's one of the, it's a very comprehensive study. It looks at urbanization, climate change, erosion, and forest loss. The biggest expan factor is the expansion of industrial farmland. And of course, <coughs> the, the less land there is to absorb carbon, the higher the CO2, the higher the CO2 levels in the, in the atmosphere. So a big chunk of the CO2 rise every year, you know, we're pushing over three parts per 
million each year, a good chunk of that is land use changes. Well, this is what it's in. Heavy tilling, multiple harvests, agrochemicals. They've increased yields, but they've destroyed long-term sustainability. So in the, in the past 20 years, agricultural production has increased threefold. The amount of irrigated land has doubled. However, fertility and is decreasing. Land is eventually abandoned and you get desertification of the land. So there's decreasing productivity on 20% of the world's cropland, 16% of forest lands, 19% of grassland, and 27% of rangeland. You know, a lot of this is related to climate change because the temperatures in the winter aren't cold enough to kill things like uh, emerald ash borer and pine beetles. So they, you know, attack the forest, they weaken the forest and the forest, you know, we're seeing all of these mega fires now. Um, Portugal, 5% of Portugal is burned this year. The, the, the acres of Portugal that have burned have skyrocketed compared to any other year. You know, we're more up, you know, in the West and, you know, in Canada and California, you know, where it's the BC fires, it was the Fort McMurray fire a year ago, it's all of the California fires that have destroyed over 8,000 structures. Right now, LA, you know, 82 degrees Fahrenheit at seven in the morning, you know, almost 100 degrees during the day, very strong Santa Ana winds, very dry humidity in the single digits. It's a powder keg waiting to go off. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, I, this, this is uh, pretty dire stuff. You know, you might need to go out to a cabin in the woods yourself and, uh, you know, rip nails out of boards or something as, uh, you know, to deal with this stuff. So, so this is the UN Convention <coughs> to Combat Desertification, the outlook. So it's, uh, you know, it's a massive document. You can get, you know, you can get the full report and download it, you know, multiple languages. You can get the executive summaries and all the different, um, different components of it. So I've uh, downloaded it here. Whoops. Okay, so I've downloaded the report, 340 pages. Okay, here now. I'll, so let me go through it page by page. Just kidding. I'll be here all night. Um, so first edition. Okay, so you know what do you do when you read a big report? Look at the pictures. Look at the beginning. Look at the you know the intro, the abstract, uh, key recommendations, key ideas, um, and then look at the conclusions. And then if you want to get more detail, you can look at the stuff. So it talks about all kinds of different things here. So all kinds of people involved. You know, let's have a look at. Uh, so, you know, what we are, a new flagship, so it's first edition, the Global Land Outlook. Full range of challenges from the pressure to population growth, climate change, urbanization, migration, conflict to food, energy, and water insecurity. Human security is increasingly fragile. Land degradation, climate change are contributing to a sense of growing instability around the world. But we need better adaptation strategies. We need to build resilience, but we also need mitigation. We need to address the problem. We're in a global climate emergency. Okay, emergency, emergency. It doesn't matter if your country's big, rich, big and small, rich and poor. Look at the U.S. I mean, Puerto Rico gets hammered, and you know it's going to be months and months and months, and it may never be re rebuilt. Like, like people talk about civilization collapsing. It doesn't all collapse overnight around the world simultaneously. The weak go first, They're, the weak are called out. Well, this is already happening. This is ongoing already. The thing is, will we turn it around or will we just ignore, you know, deny climate change and, uh, you know, all of these problems and hope that they'll go away while the stock market just goes to ever higher records. Um, okay, so the key messages, um, Pressures on land are huge, continue growing, uh, e ecosystems are degrading, biodiversity loss and climate change, the productivity of land is threatened and going down, land degradation decreases resilience to stresses. Okay, 1.3 billion people trapped on degrading agricultural land, farmers can't farm, they have to move to cities, um, destroys families, destroys lives, <coughs> causes, causes huge climate change migration, as happened in Syria with 1.5 million farmers 
um, who had to move out of the rural areas because they could no longer farm because of the largest, the worst drought in a thousand years from 2006 to 2010 in um, Syria. Um, okay, the system's broken. We've got an inefficient food system. You know, people starve to death. That's more of a transport issue. You know, we throw out food in the West that doesn't look good, right? You know, it's perfectly edible, perfectly nutritious and healthy. Not only that, but the, the, the nutrition value in foods is going down. There's a gap between production and consumption. Food loss and waste is huge, about a third. Accelerating land use change, right? Agribusiness, it's all these big, huge businesses that are out for profit and they're not interested in long-term stability. They're doing all the wrong things. If we wanted to say, what's, how do we screw the most people the worst? This is what we're doing. This is what large companies are doing, basically. Okay, so, you know, how do we go forward? You know, uh, what do we do in the future? And there's lots of things here. So I highly recommend that you look through this report. There's all kinds of good plots and you know, uh, revenge of nature, drivers of change, all kinds of stuff on, on uh, you know, the food industries and productivities of the globe, you know, land productivity, how it's changing. Um, I'm looking for a couple particular things. Well, there's livestock and stuff. So just, uh, you know, download this report and like I say, read the summary, you know, read the stuff at the end. You know, here, there, there's... You know, and this is, uh, you know, Limits to Growth that was the, 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 the Club of Rome, 1972, talked about all of these different things. So here we have the resource and the availability um, and, <coughs> you know, how much we have of different things and all of these, all of these limits that we're heading up against. Okay, so let's get back to the uh, biomass. So seven, more than 75% decline over 27 years. In biomass this was in a protected area okay um, so the data was taken over 27 years there were 63 different areas um, 96 unique location year combinations okay and the the seasonal decline was year over year so it was 76 percent decline the midsummer decline of insect biomass, flying insect biomass, was 82%. Okay, it didn't matter. Uh, you know, they, were they looked at changes in weather, land use, habitat characteristics that couldn't explain the decline. So they had basically unrecognized loss, and they attribute that to pesticides and habitat decline. Okay, and also, you know, what does the effect have? This, the, the insects are vital to life on this planet. Loss of insects, um, they have a central role in pollination. Okay, herbivory, for, so plants. You know, uh, detrivory, so dead organic matter, and the, they play a big role in decomposing it. It's not just bacteria. Um, nutrient cycling. Okay, getting the nutrients back out of dead organic matter back into the soils. A food, being a food source for higher trophic levels, such as birds, mammals, and amphibians. Okay, 80% of wild plants depend on insects for pollination. 60% of birds rely on insects as a food source. So the ecosystem services, if you like, of wild insects are 57 billion annually in the U.S. So we have to preserve insect abundance and diversity that should be a prime conservation priority you know how many studies have, have you seen in the u.s showing what the insects are doing you know it takes volunteers in germany to do a study i mean we're experts at killing things on the planet we're experts at killing other people we're experts at killing insects we're experts at killing bacteria and we think uh, we're just going to go on and be everything's going to work out hunky-dory for humanity well sorry Think again, you know, climate change, habitat loss, fragmentation, deterioration of habitat quality were some of the prime suspects in the decline, but they didn't really pan out as being the total thing. So, you know, they looked at, uh, it's a protected area. <coughs> so they concluded that it's probably pesticides. Here's one of their traps. 
Here's a better view of it, these so-called belays traps. And uh, I'll talk a bit more about the study in the next